Hi to Majiggity Hounds. <clears throat> Hi to Majiggity Hounds, folks. I'm your host, Draskin, and welcome back to episode two of Let's Play Sense, a backtracking ghost cyberpunk story where the cyberpunk part of this game died about five minutes ago. Uh, in the last episode, we began our adventure, murdered the entirety of cyberpunk ishness, went back in time 100 years, got stuck in a haunted apartment where ghosts, except for two of them, can kill you and hurt you and do terrible things to you. Uh, we met the building manager kind of downstairs who doesn't have his head on straight. I don't blame him. It's a lot of responsibility. Uh, we found a bunch of keys, a copious amount of backtracking in one singular room, and made our way up to floor two. So now we're on floor two. Uh, I didn't get close enough for a funny gag for that one, but the door is closed and then it opens instantly to just to close again. So whoever wants to, whoever knows I'm here, who's looking through the peephole of that door, really does not want me here, which I don't blame them. I have a yellow jacket. Yellow jackets are usually not a good sign, especially if they start infesting your building. Community message board. That's where people of uh, various walks of life come to message each other. This was back before the interwebs. Uh, the apartment 204 is locked with a chain, which we can just use the letter opener to open because we can. We are very talented. We can lockpick and we can open doors with a letter opener. I didn't think the door was a letter, but... A statue of Buddha next to a statue of the Virgin Mary. While Buddha's persisted Christian icon iconography has completely vanished in recent years, although that could be because of anti-theism regulations and whatever the hell she just said. That's a bathroom. There's nothing important in the bathroom. Literally nothing. Not even the toilets. So this note here will be important when we go back down a floor. Um, the important thing to note here is the color splotches on the wall, uh, which you'll probably forget later. I'll have to interact with this again, but either way. Workbench, probably used for various repairs as a keysmith machine. And there's a rusted screwdriver. The keysmith machine is locked with a four-digit numerical padlock. And the glass is going to fly away. Woo! The table's covered in dusty, petrified food. Covered in dusty? Petrified food? And dirty magazines. Not in that order. The dusty food is bad. Somehow the stove seems to still have power. It's a gas stove, so... A framed photo of an American soldier with a young Asian boy holding a baby. Judging by the military gear and the age of the photo, this must have been during the Vietnam War. There seems to be ashes and burn marks near the frame. Uh, some other stuff. Okay. So, the screwdriver was the item of importance that we get here. And as I say, if I keep interacting with an old trunk, it should be easy to pick if I find the right tool. Uh, fit, yeah. Uh, we have to go into this closet thingy now where we enter the hole uh, Spam the interact button as you pass by this table that's on the wall and then you'll get the uh, Shinde Shashin for this particular section uh, An offering cup joysticks or should I hang on should I hang on to this? Japanese lucky cat statue open the bank get a gotcha coin an old cigarette case is a Chinese black dragon motif on the front there's a note on the case. Half of the paper's torn, but I can make out most of the note. Don't trust Brian. Up to something. The rest is some kind of symbol or word I can't read. Good. This is just a plastic crate, but it'll be important later. And it is annoying that I cannot pick it up at the moment. Looks some, like some kind of peephole. I wonder what's on the other side. Look to the peephole and find peephole. It's a very pink room. And it will be enough to burn itself into your retinas if you don't have cybernetic bionic implants. <laughs> yeah, who wears a pink shirt with a cyan stripe on it? Pfft, terrible. What the hell? Judging by the distance I walked in the apartment layout, that's most likely apartment 206. Yeah, why is there just this, this space back here? Doesn't look like an exit, but I can f bet I can find some answers in there. Uh, speaking of exits, now we have to go backwards this way, because there's a guy following us. He's kind of creepy, and he also has the riggers. Well, he's got the jitters more so. He's, he's probably really nervous that he hasn't seen a real person in about a hundred years, and uh, so his head is just like... Either way. So, 
uh, as he gradually gets closer, if you're in there, uh, don't go back in there because he will be right at the door and uh, he might hurt you. So <laughs> I learned that the hard way the last time I played this so, uh, for this playthrough because I did some attempts and messed some things up. Anyway, we're done in there. Now we go past the mirror and get the stereotypical cliche. You look in the mirror. What was that? Oh my God, what was that? I don't know. Now you look at the mirror and oh my God, what are they going to do? Oh, you are the z zombie or something. I don't know. Anyway, an old intercom system probably used for emergencies and it's not working. Wonder what gave you that idea. Fuck off. Apartment 203, the door's locked. I think the door always stays locked for that door. I don't think you can ever go into apartment 203. Enter the stairs, it's also locked. The elevator has power, restored brain. Can you restore brain to my power? Thanks, that would be appreciated. Small shrine for giving offerings to the dead. Someone may have passed away in the hallway a long, long time ago. There are even some joss sticks left. So this door has a foo on it. This will be important in a little bit because with this foo, you can literally erase yourself from existence. Now you see me? Now you don't. Now you see me? Now you don't. Now you... All right. Door's locked. Now we have to go back down to the casing the keysing office? I mean, it fucking may as well be. There's so many goddamn keys down there that it may be just the keysing office. Now as we run past here, I think the... I never explained what the circle on the left does. Uh, okay, no, it won't. Uh, but if you noticed in the hallway when the, uh, the ghost of that guy appeared, uh, the circle will go down. Your stamina will go down depending on... If there's a ghost that is nearby so it, it won't go down when you're just doing this normally but it will if you are uh, being chased by something unpleasant so anyway now that we got the screwdriver we use that to get this key out of here plaster must have mi mixed with rusty water from an old pipe that is not water my friend or rusty water that is not no uh, I think one of the keys all right, yeah, you use the screwdriver to Blake to Blake the lock. One of the paper, one of the papers has a key drawn on it, and we need this in order to make a key because we actually need to make a key to get into room three uh, two oh six. So that's basically what we spend the majority of our time uh, doing. Now back to room two oh four. I think it can't hurt to pop in here, but yeah, it was like, there's a lot of back and forth. Uh, interact with this again. Okay, good. Yeah. So once you've got the uh, key from uh, the the map numbers of keys and stuff like that, you come up here, talk back, uh, talk back to the phone, uh, and get the number for the padlock for the keysmith machine, which you can't unlock yet for some stupid reason. See, this is why the why it doesn't make a whole lot of sense sometimes. I'm gonna go back to room 206 to see if I can get the prompt. Will I be able to interact with the Keysmith machine now or do I have to go to room 201 for some reason? Yeah, see? Okay, now that we have to go and interact with room 206 until we get the leave prompt uh, then we can interact with the keysmith machine and input the code to open the padlock so it was 9615 right correct first things first I'll need to figure out what the keys design is there's got to be a map for each apartment's key I should check the leasing office or apartments manager whatever apartment uh, I need to know what the 206 key looks like since we just picked it up from the office downstairs I'll need molten metal. There's no way that someone had a kiln to work with around here, but cooking equipment and a metal with a low melting point will work. So now this is also how pedantic the uh, this can be. 
Somehow the stove seems to have power. I can use the stove to melt some metal down and make a key. I just need an iron cooking pan and something to melt. Now we can go and pick up a walk from somewhere. Uh, if you didn't act like an idiot and pull the ghost in here to the door, you could maybe try to go down there to get a walk, but I think it's a bit too risky. And I actually don't know if it spawns uh, straight away. But now that we've done with all of that, we can head uh, over this way to the apartment manager, building manager's room, and begin getting stuff from here. Now, the first outfit that you can actually unlock in this, on whatever game difficulty you're playing on, uh, after you interact here to get this Shinrei Shashin, uh, doesn't look like anything that can help me. There's a head on the fridge. So you can hang your jacket up here. And that will give you your first proper outfit of the game. And then you can pick your jacket back up if you want. Uh, I Generally, it prioritizes that. So if you go to leave, it'll do that and pick it up. And it's like, I want to try and leave it there and see what happens. But uh, yeah, ma majority of the things in this room you can't really interact with yet because you need to do them in a certain order. But like here, uh, now you can take the walk once you interact with the stove and get the prompt that, yes, I actually need that. Uh, the map of the building. The desk here. There's also a key with 205 etched into the side. Uh, we don't have to go to that room because that room is actually a room where you can save. Uh, but we don't have anything to save with yet, I don't think. But anyway, so the majority of the things in the room, we'll interact with them again on the way out because... Uh, an old offering shrine, there's more dust and grime built up here than anywhere else in the apartment. It looks as though this shrine went unused long before the building became abandoned. Hmm. Damaged photo frame. This photo frame's empty and the glass is shattered. Shrines like this need a photo to show who you're making the offerings to. So now that we've done that, we can start interacting with everything we just passed. Because if you do, you can still interact with it, but it won't actually give you the item you need. Uh, the nightstand has some junk on it and the light isn't working, nothing else of interest here, except when you interact with it again, there's a Betamax tape. Betamax tapes are used to save, so. Judging by the frame, the man in this portrait was very important. I don't know who he is, but I get an uneasy feeling about him. There's a journal on the nightstand. It has written, it's written in Mandarin, but I should be able to read most of it. I won't. I can't read English. Most of the entries seem to be about the building manager's life. It talks a lot about a family in China, but not much else. The last page has been torn out, but I can keep the entries recorded in my journal app. So here's the first major uh, important place to interact with, with all of this. It's an old military uniform. It was clear, clearly well cared for, and even today it's in incredible shape. It le at least it's still in the shape of a military uniform. So it's been cared for well enough. Something is sticking out of the breast pocket. Open the pocket. This is part one of three of a photograph. We need all three pieces, if you can math. Uh, an old teacup, still can't grab that. We'll be grabbing that on the way out, though. A soldier kneeling in front of the flag. Odd, he looks a lot like that thing that was chasing me in a strange way. Wait a minute, there's a slight bulge in the image. It seems to be something behind it. There's part two of three of the photo, and then part three of three of the photo is on the bulletin board over there. Looks like various notes and messages from the tenants regarding their needs and rental agreements. What's this? A third part of the photo. Now we interact with his desk to use the tape dispenser to piece the photo back together. It's a photo of a Chinese family. I'm unsure of who they are, but they're clearly connected to the man who lived in this apartment. Uh, can I interact with this again for anything? No, I can't. Even though I can later. And it's very annoying. But now that we got the photo, we can slot it into the frame and begin to make an offering. Maybe giving an offering that will ease the family spirit. So you can place the offering cup. And now we have to m do all this kind of weird artsy fartsy back and forth uh, to get stuff. So now that we just placed an offering cup, now we can grab this one. Because we'll need this for another offering. Uh, and then as you pass by here, you can interact with the bag of rice. There was a guy there. I saw him. Don't think I didn't see you. Uh, damn it. Yeah, I always inadvertently interact with it. But... When we're done with this part, uh, I'm actually going to change to the outfit I like the most, which is the key pal, which is what you get for, uh, for completing the game, because I just like that outfit a lot. Uh, Joss incense sticks. Now we head back. 
And once you grab the Joss sticks, his ghost will be in this room. The guy with his head on backwards. As you'll see. Oh, oh no, I'm so scared. He's coming at me. What, what if he falls over? That'll be actually be kind of bad, because he's walking backwards for Christmas. At least he still has one of his sandals on. Gotta give him credit for that. So now what we do to get past him is we go out here, and then we, uh... Arrivederci, frog. Now, as he goes past, uh, there will be a prompt where you need to wiggle your stick really quickly back and forth like this. I don't know what the prompts on PC are, but on controller anyway, as you could very clearly see, you have to wiggle your stick back and forth uh, while hiding from him. And now we go back into the room, and this little pile of crap on the desk here, uh, you will interact with that because at the moment it's like, oh, there's nothing of importance on there. It's like, uh, yes, there is because, um, yeah, I threw away my lighter because it was de-lightered. It was de-gassed. Now we go and we grab the Zippo and then we go over and flick our wick and light the entire apartment on fire. Leave me alone! Yeah, do it. Leave her alone. With the ominous red light. And then this is funny. Because he's like, Oh, I'm gonna kill you! And then he just gets fucking abducted. He gets abducted by his family. Or something. I don't know. If he gets abducted by other ghosts, it's like, Not now, Ghost Man 1. You are not scaring the shit out of her today. Stupid. So, now that we're done with that, we can head. You don't have to do that offering first, but I'm doing it just because I, it, it's, it's actually technically more efficient if you just get the paper, like the photograph and the walk, and then you head back this way. Now that this guy's gonna be waiting for us. His ghost is gonna be out there patrolling the hallway because of course it is. But we have to come back here to put the walk on the stove. And this is just how annoying this is. You put the walk on the stove, and now you need the prompt for lead or pewter. Now we can actually go and get the lead or pewter thing it was talking about. It's just, like, why? Why, why do you need to be like that anal retentive about it? I mean, we go down and we interact with this figure here, take this Taoist statue up, and turn it into Taoist. Don't eat it, though. I'm sure it has a lot of important minerals in it that are important for daily function. Also, check this out. He's not quite with things. He's actually supposed to kind of be more... Ooh, nice. Ooh, ooh. He cracked his back. People really like cracking their backs here in this place. We need molten metal of some kind. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the stove. And now we need to wait. We need to wait as this Taoist figure toasts. Emotional damage! So, uh, yeah, he's uh, supposed to kind of show up and be a little more visible than that. Uh, at some point, but in this case, he just stayed a glitch the whole time. I will send you to Jesus. So, framed photo of an American, whatever. Yeah, th this is, uh, you have to exercise your patience muscle with these. You actually do have to wait. Now, we pour the molten metal into the key thing and then we have to wait for it to cool. We don't have to wait as long as this one and it doesn't give you a prompt to tell you that it's done. You just have to wait a little bit and then uh, interact with it and you should be able to, there we go. Okay, now that we have the key, now we have to head to room 206. Leave me alone, man. I'm not interested. Your fingers are way too long. Okay, so room 205. Uh, as I sh said, has the save. You can save here. 
using uh, the Bill Nye the Science Guy TV set that we all used to watch as kids. When they rolled it in, it's like, yeah, we get to watch a video instead of doing work today. Uh, and I use the 206 key. And this room, uh, pick up another Jade Bangle because this is what is your health in this game, as you probably guessed from uh, episode one when we narrowly escaped death from that guy who wanted to give us a hug with the door, uh, even though the door should have killed me first. Uh, there's supposed to be the same hole from the crawl space. There's blood staining the edge. Um, yes. She's crying while holding onto a small piece of paper, or maybe a photograph? Look at this graph! I suppose I'd be traumatized if I were holding a photograph, too. Especially after that song. Judging by the emptiness of this apartment, it looks like there was a tenant here that moved out before the building was abandoned. How do you move out after the building's abandoned? I think it would require people to leave so that it becomes abandoned. Ah, oh, stupid. What the stu- what? However, some mails appears to be left behind. Nothing looks particularly important to me, though, despite the Seattle police stamp on it. This police officer appears to be taking notes. Uh, he is signing in sign language to a girl who has buried her face in her hands and doesn't want to see how terrible his sign language is. But I can't read much of his writing because he's not writing. Corroborated alibi. Person unknown. non suspect Suspect family member. Suspect in what? A terrible sign language. It's a fucking crime. A crime against humanity. And I don't even know sign language. I suppose I could take a closer look at the I, mail here, but there's some answers. So, uh, oh, reading. It's a folder full of information regarding an orphanage in Portland. In 1968, Chua was ad 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 adopted by a Hank and Farrah McCulloch. Most of these papers outline her adoption status and details about her health. She's dead. There's nothing here about Thang. How do you name? How do you pronounce that? Whatever. These uh, the the envelopes from the Seattle Police Department. A detective, James Katzburn. It's addressed to Tracy McCulloch. It appears to have been opened already. Dear Tracy, I did quite a bit of digging on Tony. I don't believe that what I am about to give you will need any more commentary from me. I hope this information helps you find some solace. If there's anything I can do for you, please reach out. Reach out as far as you can. If you can't reach out far enough, detach your arm and reach out even further than that. I guess I should update your name in my file to Nguyen, huh? Huh is a really bad name. Uh, there's a small packet inside. The pages are mostly photocopies of legal documents that are illegal. Many appear to be from the San Diego Refuse Center. Refuge Center. Refuse, yes, they're all shit. All dated from the late 1960s. Two names appear frequently on these papers, though. Chua Nguyen, age 2, and Than Nguyen, age 10. Who puts their ages in their names? And especially in parentheses. They don't stay two forever, you shithead. It appears that Chua was moved to an orphanage in Portland. He was also moved via bag. What Chuan? While Than was traversed, traversed to a special institution for children suffering from extreme mental trauma. I would be too if I was placed in a bag like that. There seems to be something missing from the last page. There's a small paper tear from a staple being ripped out. The staple was really important because it had all the answers of all the tests that they... Oh no, the wall died! The wall was shot and then it bled out in the moments that I was here looking not that way. My condolences for the wall, man. Yeah. Okay. So now before I leave this room, it's gonna get a little on the trippy side. There's something here now. It looks like a mummified finger. The end of the bones, almost like a key. We just got the oldest key known to man. A key invented before keys were invented. Uh, but as I go through this door, if you have a fear of... Well, if you have a fear of epilepsy, so if distorted, terrible images make you want to have an aneurysm, uh, look away until we get through that room. I will mention when it's safe to look. Uh, and also, if you have a fear of eyes and a fear of being watched, also do not watch this particular section. There is a Betamax tape in here on the table as you go through, and as you can see, the eyes are lovely today. Very bloodshot. They uh, need some eye drops or something. And the guy who's not really quite there is following us in this room. That's right. 
He's following us in the bed and the night table stand thing are possessed. I would be too, if I had to walk through a nightmare inducing thing like that. Anyway, we're out of that room now. You can look back. You can uh, re-avert your eyes to the thing. The blood on the wall is gone, so the wall is alive again. Thank God for that. We managed to call a medic in time through our t telepathic powers. And we managed to rescue the wall. Now that we have the ancient key to end all keys, we can head back to the keysmith room, run past the guy. He was about to summon Exodia or something. Like, he was just powering up like a vacuum. Anyway, now, again, now that we got the key. Actually, is he in here? Bruh, he's in two places at once. How can you do it? How can you do that? That's cheating. Speaking of cheating, we'll deal with fucking cheating little shit in a little bit. But anyway, we open the trunk and disintegrate the key. Well, actually, the lockpick. I wouldn't exactly call a mummified finger a lockpick, but whatever floats your boat. Or sinks it, I don't... It's filled with letters to someone named Chua in apartment 206. Well, why are they here? They should be over there. Dear Chua, please forgive me for scaring you. I did not mean to make you upset. I just wanted to know you. That's what they all say. If you'll just look at this fucking photo, then you will fucking understand. I am sorry. Mr. Sue will probably fire me, but I want to tell you the truth. I fucking love you, okay? Fan Tony Nguyen. There's a photo attached. It looks like an exact duplicate of the one that I was just looking at with, without the burn marks and without the damage. Uh, it's a very good Photoshop job, by the way. <laughs> Especially on the kid. There's something hidden under the letters. Yeah, words. Uh, no, excuse me. That happens a lot. I wanted to interact with this again to get the elevator release tool so that I can release the elevator, just like releasing the hounds. But it's a little more destructive than uh, the. So now we uh, put the new not damaged photo in there, make the offering, so and sorry. tell them that they're sorry, and then he'll get upset. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I am sorry. Sorry that you had this really bad bedhead for th 100 years. I almost said 30 years, and that's underselling it a little bit. But now his ghost is gone, and her ghost pops up, and it's cool looking. Oh, I don't know who she is. Now, we do have to go back down that hallway. Fortunately, he's not there anymore, so he can't hurt us. But what will hurt me is the fact that I have to go back to the elevator and interact with the elevator because we get the door open but the elevator won't release all the way and I need to climb on something because I'm too short. Now we have to go all the way back, all the way back to room 204 and we have to then go and pick up that plastic crate that I was talking about. Yeah, that's how pedantic this is. But there is another reward for going back here anyway, because now that we've dealt with that, a jade bangle now suddenly appears on this thing. And because I don't think this one uh, is normal, it's the bastard child. And you can pick up this walk even though you'll never use it again. And then we get a plastic crepe. Cool. Uh, you can actually carry one extra jade bangle if you pick that one up, I think. Uh, because as you can see on the top left, we have two meaning that we can survive two altercations with the dastardly, bastardly ghosts. Uh, but you can actually pick up another one, uh, which we will be doing soon-ish, I think. So, yeah, I just, I just think that's funny. You can carry more than is visible, but only in this order. Uh, so if you try to have more than the two, it won't let you pick any more up. And there is a jump scare in this cutscene, so just be aware of that, even though it's not really like a, oh my god, it's a jump scare, it's just a boo. Boo. And then she just fucks off, disappears. Gone. Totally. It's like, okay.